Today I've got a special guest in the studio, which is a, a, an honor and pleasure for me. Renata is an expert in behavior change and development. And, and therefore, I thought would would convey amazing value to to our audience about leadership and change issues. And specifically, what we want to talk about is the leadership of the doctor relative to his team and or her team, and how that relates from an attention span perspective, and what we can do to drive better and more consistent change. Renata has done lots and lots of study. I mean, I, I think I understand psychology. I, I look like a junior high student compared to Renata and her experience of understanding how leadership, how uh, change facilitation can take place. I want to have a conversation about how we can empower our doctors to lead their team more effectively. What, what do you see as, let's first start, start off with, what do you see as challenges for the average doctor who's trying to lead their team? Well, I see with a lot of dentists and folks that I coach in dentistry that a lot of the key issues in communication stem around sort of the assumptive nature of how people communicate. And that also plays into what you proposed earlier with regards to only having an attention span of nine seconds. That's been documented by the BBC and it's proven to be true. So that if we have a window to really open up and grab someone's attention to be able to have a meaningful conversation is only nine seconds, the problem comes when we assume that people hear everything we say. Uh, totally. I mean, distraction is such a huge issue that you can... I mean, how often are you talking to someone, you, you can see that, you know, it's the old, we have the sender and we have the receiver, and it doesn't matter how good the sender is if the receiver is, you know, glazed over and gone. So the question becomes, how can we, without beating people, how can we keep their attention longer than nine seconds to where we can have that impact? Well, it's not an easy task. It certainly requires a lot of self-awareness, a lot of work on leadership and understanding your team. And it requires everyone on the team to have the right kind of training, the right kind of understanding about each individual's differences and similarities. So when you work as a team and you communicate important information on a regular basis, that people are actually striving to stop, to listen, to open up and receive information and then to act on that. You know, you bring up a really good point of, I mean, there's so many breakdowns. One, do we even have a good vision ourselves as a leader? Two, how effectively are we putting the information out? Three, are they receiving it? And then, as you brought up, action is the key. Without action in this, of course, it doesn't matter how good the communication is, it doesn't matter how good the vision is, action becomes the key. So where do you see the biggest breakdown? Is it in the communication to give the information, to disseminate it out? Is it in the receiving? Is it in just the wrong plan? I mean, where do you see the biggest breakdowns take place? The mix comes with misaligned expectations and overreaching assumptions. Both of those two things play in a lot of disconnecting communication. And certainly in a small team like a dental practice, we see this being even more relevant. I'm assuming, all right, as the recipient of information, I know how to act. I know what you want, right? Anticipation in dentistry is everything. But are we really <coughs> anticipating the right things based on what that person is saying? You, the dentist, have a certain expectation of action on the part of the employee and you deliver a message that you don't really know truly know is received in the right way to create the right response and create the right action to do the task or the interaction that's required to get something important done in your practice every day so understanding these two places where we disconnect is vitally important before we then begin to reconnect the ability to communicate so somebody that communicates very quickly, somebody who communicates very commanding, might be giving information either too quickly or to somebody that's completely disengaged and disinterested. Faking the communication is something that we all do. We all look like we're listening when the vast majority of us are not. We need to slow down, we need to communicate simply, and we need to make sure that we follow that up with communication that allows us to understand that we got the result that we wanted. I look forward to seeing you guys in two weeks. Renata, I want to thank you, two weeks, one week. Renata, I want to thank you so much for joining me here today, coming all the way out here to the studio. 
and and taking the time out of your busy life in order to spend with us. Thanks for having me. It's been great. It's been a blast. So have a wonderful week. We'll see you at 8 o'clock Mountain Time, 10 o'clock on the East Coast. Until then, have a wonderful day. What if you could have the practice of your dreams? What's holding you back? Imagine a life where you have everything you ever wanted.